Hi, Phil Weiss of Applied Wealth Management here with a video summary of this week's blog, Secure Act 2.0, Key Tax and Retirement Provisions. There's a lot to talk about in this week's blog, because there are a lot of provisions in this bill. I only took the ones that I thought were more relevant or significant, but there's a lot more than what I covered here. And I also am considering holding a workshop on this topic, and you'll get more information on that in the near future. So I picked 16 things to discuss today. Just, you know, the SECURE Act is the setting up every community or setting every community up for retirement enhancement. The first part of this passed in 2019. Part two was part of the bill that passed at the end of last year on December 29th that was signed into law. So let's get on to the provisions that I discussed. The first one is the changes to the RMDH. For those born before 2033, it's going to be increased to 73. And then after that, it goes up to 75. Penalty relief for late RMDs has been relaxed. It used to be 50%. Now it's either 25 or 10%, depending upon uh, when you act, or at least it can be. Now, number three is a retroactive first year election with regards to sole proprietors for a solo 401k. If you, want, if you want to open up a solo 401k for what happened in 2022, you can now open it up this year by your tax due date and fund it. So it's more like an IRA is treated. Number four, this is a pretty big one. Unused funds in a 529 plan are committed to be rolled into a Roth IRA. There are some restrictions on this. The account has to be open for at least 15 years. You can't roll over contributions within the last five, you can only contribute those funds to the Roth of the beneficiary. It's unclear as to whether or not you can roll it over to another beneficiary, you know, change the beneficiary if that restarts the 15 years. You're subject to the annual Roth contribution limits, which is currently 6,500, but it's, there's not an income limitation on it, which is a good thing. Number five, expands auto enrollment in newly established retirement plans so it makes it easier uh, for people to be auto enrolled which when you make that the default option people are more likely to contribute number six there's a modification to the credit for small employer pension plan startup costs so again it makes it a little easier for small employers to start up plans number seven qualified charitable distributions will be indexed They've been at seven hundred thousand dollars since they were first started in 2015. Now they'll be indexed, and the age still remains 70 and a half, even though the RMD age is going to be 73 and then 75. Number eight, indexing of IRA and 401k 403b matching contributions. Those have not been indexed in the past. They will be going forward. And then there's also a special provision for those that turn 62, 63, 64 in certain years that allow you to put in even more. Uh, number nine, an option to treat your employer matching contributions as Roth. In the past, those can only go into your tax deferred account. Now they can go into a Roth, but remember if you do make this election, then you're gonna be taxed on it. When you've got a matching contribution on your tax deferred account, there's no tax. Number 10, you have a change to the catch-up uh, contribution to employer plans. So the big thing here is that if you make more than $145,000, these have to be into a Roth account. This is one of the bigger revenue raisers in this bill. Those that make under $145,000 can still pick to put it into a tax deferred or a Roth account. Number 11, no RMDs on Roth savings account. It was that if you had an employer 401k or Roth 401k, you had to take RMDs. On a regular Roth IRA, you didn't. They've gotten rid of that discrepancy and now there's no RMDs on either type of Roth account. Number 12, this is to help those that have student loan debt that were unable to contribute to their accounts because of their debt and their, their payments. Under this rule, those that make payments on their student loans, their employers are allowed to treat those as effective deferrals for purposes of making an employer map. So that means that even if you can't or are in a position to make contributions to your 
workplace retirement plan, your employer can still at least give you a matching contribution if you're making student loan payments. Number 13, the age of disability onset increased for able account eligibility and went from 26 to 46. Number 14, we have improved coverage for part-time workers. It's a little bit easier for a part-time worker to become enrolled in an employer retirement plan now. Number 15, we have the creation of a lost and found database. What does this mean? Well, we often change jobs, we move, sometimes we lose track of our accounts. There are websites and things like that that you can go to to help you identify unclaimed property. Now there'll be something similar for your retirement accounts. Take a little bit of time for that to roll out. And that's just a general comment too. You want to make sure on all these you pay attention to the dates because not everything's effective immediately. And the last one that I discussed was surviving spouses can now elect to be treated as an employee. And this would be relevant if you're, you're the surviving spouse and the spouse that passed was younger than you, so you can delay your RMDs or you can make your RMDs smaller if you need to. That's something to keep in mind about all this that I talked about some in the blog too, is that these rules, just because we can delay RMDs doesn't mean that's the right thing. You want to look and this can create more tax planning opportunities to do things like Roth conversions. You want to try to manage the taxes that you pay as you pull money out of your retirement accounts. You don't want to just let it sit there and accumulate. So it can be a little bit dangerous from tax perspective if you just wait to take those RMDs. I know some people are fortunate enough to not need the money, but if you want to minimize the cost to you, your spouse, your surviving spouse, or your heir to getting money out of these accounts, you don't want to let it just sit there till RMDA chips. Hope that you find this blog helpful. I'll be back again next week with the process five favorite reads of the week. Have a great day.